Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz pianist, composer, band leader, and educator, Lynn Ariel. Her latest 2020 CD, Chimes of Freedom, is charting very well, and she opened up about this project that's about human strength and something that we can all learn from. She is a storyteller that has had 14 albums as a leader, topping the Jazz Week radio charts. And she has been on tours that have taken her around the world to Brazil, Germany, Austria, Serbia, Poland, Switzerland, Italy, France, Belgium, and beyond. She is a very active educator, and she is currently the professor of jazz studies and the director of small ensembles at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. So please get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. So, Lynn, thank you for taking a minute out to speak with me on jazz. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Chimes of Freedom, it's a great album. It's charting very well. Talk to me a little bit about kind of your vision and how you feel about this album. Well, the theme of the album is really to celebrate the tenacity of the human spirit and our ability as human beings to triumph over difficult circumstances, to persevere, to handle whatever comes our way. I really believe in mankind's ability to navigate even horrific situations like the one we're going through right now. Well, I guess that's the thing about this that I'm, I'm kind of starting to see with these interviews over the last few days is that there's kind of been this theme and it's probably, you know, it's totally ever present right now with what's going on around us. So this is probably a very timely um, album and a very timely notion for everybody to keep in mind as we go through this. Um, talk to me a little bit about, let's go back to the beginnings of your life here. Talk to me a little bit about your childhood, where you were born and raised and how you got into music. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and, um, um, I had a little toy piano that was about two feet wide, plastic, and it made made sounds, and I would play tunes that I'd heard off the radio uh, at a very young age, like right before morning kindergarten, so I guess I was three or four years old, and I somehow made a connection to the sounds I was hearing and the notes on that piano, and I begged my parents to let me study piano. And they asked the local piano teacher, and she said that I was much too young. Of course, nowadays, that would never happen because there's no such thing as too young. But then she said, you have to wait. And so I would continue to play by ear and explore that world. And I remember saying to my mom when I was quite young, I said, I can play the melodies, but I need more chords. (laughs) And uh, Anyway, uh, I eventually started to study with the local piano teacher and she would put little pieces in front of me to, to learn how to read music, and I would ask her to play them for me, and she did, and I would kind of learn them by ear and until she realized that I was not learning to read the music. And then she said, I'm not going to play them for you anymore. You have to figure out what the notes are. And uh, so my natural inclination was to play by ear and to make up little melodies. And I didn't have any exposure to jazz until maybe I was in college. So what music in the beginning, what musicians were you listening to that just made you think, this is the way, this is, I love it? Well, when I was a little girl, I was listening to musicals like The Sound of Music and Camelot and My Fair Lady. But later, I really didn't listen to much jazz. I just had a passing thought one day as I was walking down the street when I was finishing up a master's degree in classical music um, that I should study jazz. And I didn't really know that jazz is improvisation, you know, like taking the harmony of a tune and creating new melodies. And I went for some lessons with Tony King at the Wisconsin Conservatory of Music, and he, he put Round Midnight in front of me, and he said, read that, and I tried to stumble through it, and, and then he said, now make up new melodies over the same chords. And I said, you're kidding. That's what... That's what jazz is, so that's where we start. And that was it for me. I realized this is a whole world that I needed to explore. So what was one of the first live jazz shows you saw that really inspired you? You know, I can't remember one in particular, but in Milwaukee, there was a club that was a really incredible club called the Jazz Gallery. And I remember hearing Sonny Stitt, um, George Coleman, Bobby Hutcherson, McCoy Tyner, they would all come through, and Kenny Barron, and I remember being incredibly inspired. I didn't 
understand what they were doing, but I just loved the music, and um, they were such giants, and, and there was such power in their playing. Your 14 albums as a leader have charted very well. You've obviously had a great jazz career. What do you like best about being a musician? It allows me the opportunity to constantly grow and evolve and explore. There's never an end. There's never a point where an artist is finished. And I always want to explore new new things and, and new ways of playing and new approaches to playing the instrument as well as to, to writing. And uh, this album, Times of Freedom, which is my 15th CD, really I kind of, I think I grew a lot in the process and it took me a long time to write the material. And I think there was harmonic growth, just kind of a change in some of the uh, the approaches I took to um, composition. At this point in your career, do you have anything that you're looking at that you really want to accomplish, anything that's kind of on your list of things as time moves forward that you really want to get done? I have such a long list that I don't usually know where to start. <laughs> and it, it's really long. <laughs> and, and it could, and this involves my practice and what I'm doing with, you know, improvisation and physical technique at the piano and getting more comfortable and being as tuned in and connected to my heart as I possibly can with every note I play. And that's the process to kind of get out of the way of overthinking or being in, in, in the left brain, so to speak. And that's the process, and I'm always trying new things to get myself into that space. So you have traveled quite extensively throughout your career to a lot of places around the world. And I guess this is probably with the coronavirus epidemic going on right now, a pandemic, um, you know, it's probably good to kind of dream a little dream. And what do you like best about going to other places around the world and giving your music to other cultures and people? Well, every time I play for people, it reminds me that music is a universal language. And my goal is to reach people and to touch them in some way and to connect with them through the music and personally. And I'm always deeply grateful to have an audience that wants to come and hear the music. And I feel a real responsibility to, to bring my absolute best every time and to really find the repertoire and plan the set so that I, I will really reach reach people and keep them engaged for the time that they're that, the, that we're together and so you know every every concert is different but the audience inspires me every time if you so talk to me a little bit about mentors that have been in your life you're a professor and you're teaching the future but what mentors have you had in your life that inspired the way that you not only play but the way that you teach students i've had many mentors um I would say Richie Byrack was a great mentor. Uh, I studied, I've studied with many people over the years, with Fred Hirsch, with David Hazeltine, with Andy Laverne, Doug Johnson, Ollie Rock, Rockenberger, and a, a very long list, Mike Longo. And this goes back 25 years. And I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. So um, Mark Copeland, John McNeil. I've, I've learned so much from everyone, and everyone has a different perspective. Each teacher is unique. You know, they, they've all helped. They've shaped who I am as a musician and helped me to find my, my own personal voice. Let me ask you this. If you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see a show, see a musician, who would you go see? And if you could even talk to them about after, after the show, just have a conversation, who would that be with? Well, I would want to hear John Coltrane live. I'd want to hear Miles Davis live, uh, Bill Evans, uh, I've heard McCoy Tyner several times, but I, I would love to hear him more, more of the jazz greats that I, you know, too many to mention, that I would just love to, to, to hear and speak with them. So why do you love jazz? Jazz represents freedom to me, freedom of expression, limitless possibilities, um, a huge, huge canvas of um, sounds and textures and, you know, just limitless possibilities musically. So everyone has a perception of who you are, your family, your friends, your fans, your students, but you're living your life. What's your perception mm -hmm. of who you are? Who do you think you are? Well, I think 
I'm many different people. I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm a performer. I write music. I'm a, I'm a wife. I'm a partner. Um, I'm a mom to our kitties. <laughs> Four cats. I'm a business person. So at any given time during the day, I'm all of those things. And, you know, at, you know, at, at any point, I'm kind of focusing in a different way when I'm booking uh, engagements or dealing with the business of music, which takes up a lot of time. Um, and so I kind of have to be able to switch. And then it's time to go to the piano, and I need to get into that space. Um, as I get older, I, I, I keep working on time management because there's just so much to do. It's really hard to keep up with everything. Wonderful. That was my final question. Hey, thank you for taking some time out today to talk about your career in music and about your latest album and, and these strange times for jazz musicians. Hopefully we all come out stronger and see the world in a way that's probably better, hopefully. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest musicians in Florida, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Lynn for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.